20 hours 14 minutes ago Biden told Netanyahu, U.S. will not participate in offensive operations against Iran, U.S. official says. Twenty hours fourteen minutes ago Biden told Netanyahu, U.S. will not participate in offensive operations against Iran, U.S. official says. From CNN's M.J. Lee. A U.S. Marine guards the entrance to the west wing of the White House on Saturday. Sean Thu, EPA, Bloomberg, Getty Images. The U.S. will not participate in any offensive operations against Iran, U.S. President Joe Biden has made clear to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a senior administration official told CNN. Greetings, viewers. Peter here at Sonic Haven Studios, your friendly neighborhood news reporter, ready to dive into the heart of today's events and bring you the stories that matter most. From local news that impacts your community to global developments shaping our shared future, I'll be your voice in the whirlwind of current affairs. So, sit tight, grab your favorite beverage, and let's embark on a journey through the headlines together, where knowledge meets insight, right here with me, Peter, your trusted source for news. If you're enjoying the insightful reporting and in-depth analysis we provide, make sure to subscribe and like our channel. Your support fuels our passion for bringing you the most relevant and engaging news, content. Together, let's build a community committed to staying informed and empowered. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like, let's keep the conversation going. The comments were relayed during the phone call that the two leaders shared in the aftermath of Iran's retaliatory strikes against Israel. 20 hours 34 minutes ago Biden tells Netanyahu tonight was a win, nothing of value, hit in Israel, U.S. official says from CNN's MJ Lee Israel should consider tonight a win because the current U.S. assessment is that Iran's attacks had been largely unsuccessful and demonstrated Israel's superior military capability. President Joe Biden told Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in their phone call, a senior administration official told CNN. The U.S.'s assessment tonight was that almost all of the drones and missiles, including more than 100 ballistic missiles launched by Iran had been knocked out of the sky. No cruise missile made impact, the official said, and nothing of value was hit. 20 hours 34 minutes ago no reports of injuries directly through Iranian strikes, according to Israel's emergency service from CNN's Benjamin Brown in London there have been no reports of injuries suffered directly through Iranian strikes, according to Israel's emergency service. However, the Megan David Adam, MDA, emergency service said it was called to treat a total of 31 people who suffered minor injuries while making their way to shelters and who suffered panic attacks during the drone and missile attacks. Earlier, MDA said it had taken a seven-year-old girl to hospital who had suffered a severe head injury due to shrapnel from an interceptor missile that was launched to intercept an Iranian projectile. 20 hours 34 minutes ago Israeli military says more than 55 rockets fired from Lebanon to Israel over past hour more than 55 rockets have been fired from Lebanon to Israel over the past hour, according to the Israeli military spokesperson. This come after about 40 rockets were fired at Israel from southern Lebanon on Friday, according to the Israel Defense Forces. Hezbollah militants said they had fired the rockets at Israeli artillery positions in response to recent Israeli attacks and in support of Palestinian people in Gaza. Remember, since the start of the Hamas-Israel war on October 7, Israel's flare-up with Hezbollah has intensified on Lebanon's southern border with Israel. Hezbollah, a Lebanese armed group backed by Iran, has its main area of operations there. Hezbollah has frequently fired missiles into Israel since October 7 and Israel has responded with its own fire, including airstrikes. Israel has ordered the evacuation of communities along the Lebanese border. 20 hours 34 minutes ago Iran's attack on Israel lasted about five hours, U.S. officials say from CNN's Oren Lieberman the wave of strikes launched from Iran towards Israel appears to have subsided, two U.S. officials said. The attacks lasted approximately five hours. Early Sunday morning in Israel, the country Home Front Command cancelled its request for citizens to remain near shelters, an indication that the Israeli military believes the immediate threat of incoming attack has passed. The U.S., along with Israel, monitored the barrage of drone and missile attacks that began Saturday night and continued into early Sunday morning. The number of launches appeared to fall during Sunday's early hours, the officials said. U.S. forces throughout the region were positioned to provide defensive support to Israel ahead of the attack, and the U.S. intended to intercept as many of the launches as it could. 
U.S. forces intercepted a number of drones intended for Israel as part of a coordinated defensive effort, and Washington remains vigilant for the potential of more activity. However, even as the number of Iranian drone and missile launches has fallen, Iranian proxy Hezbollah in Lebanon fired a barrage of rockets at northern Israel early Sunday morning. 20 hours 34 minutes ago, whoever harms us, we will harm them, says Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said in a statement on Saturday that Israel had been preparing for an attack from Iran. In recent years, and especially in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for a direct attack by Iran, he said. Our defensive systems are deployed, we are ready for any scenario, both defensively and offensively. The state of Israel is strong. The IDF is strong. The public is strong, he said. Netanyahu thanked the US, Britain, France and its other allies for standing alongside Israel. We have determined a clear principle, whoever harms us, we will harm them. We will defend ourselves against any threat and will do so level-headedly and with determination," his statement said. 20 hours 35 minutes ago U.S. has significant military presence in region and has said it will defend Israel from CNN's Haley Britsky ahead of Iran launching dozens of drones toward Israel. President Joe Biden on Friday made clear the U.S. would help defend its ally, we are devoted to the defense of Israel, he said from the White House. We will support Israel. We will help defend Israel and Iran will not succeed. The U.S. has forces in Iraq and Syria that could potentially intercept drones en route to Israel, depending on the location from which they're launched. U.S. Navy forces in the Red Sea have previously intercepted long-range missiles launched from Houthis in Yemen toward Israel. Troops in region, there are thousands of U.S. troops. Throughout the Middle East, and a U.S. defense official told CNN this week that the Defense Department was moving additional assets to the Middle East. At the start of the war between Israel and Hamas, the U.S. shifted a significant number of assets to the Middle East in an attempt to act as a deterrence and prevent the conflict from spilling out into the region more broadly. Another roughly 1,000 U.S. troops are still en route to help set up a floating pier that will be used to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza. Pentagon spokesperson Major General Pat Ryder said this week that it was still on track to be operational by late April or early May. Strike Group, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group remains in the region. The strike group includes 6,000 sailors, the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Philippine Sea, CG-58, and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers USS Mason, DDG-87, and USS Gravely, DDG-107. The group also includes Carrier Air Wing 3, which is composed of nine squadrons, including four strike fighter squadrons. Houthi attacks, for the last several months, the U.S. has continuously shot down missiles, rockets, and drones launched by the Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen, as well as attacks launched by Iran-backed proxy groups in Iraq and Syria. Three U.S. soldiers were killed in January. When a drone was launched at a small U.S. outpost in Jordan. CENTCOM leader, Gen. Eric Carrilla, the commander of CENTCOM who is the senior general overseeing U.S. forces in the Middle East, was in Israel on Friday for meetings with his Israeli counterparts. A U.S. official told CNN on Saturday that Carrilla had left the country. 20 hours 35 minutes ago Iran launches retaliatory strikes toward Israel from CNN's Lauren Izzo, Jeremy Diamond, Hamdi Alkshali, and Adam Poramadi Iran launched a wave of retaliatory strikes toward Israel, fueling fears of regional escalation following an apparent Israeli attack on an Iranian embassy complex in Syria last week. Several dozen drones were launched from within Iran on Saturday, a senior U.S. administration official told CNN, while an Israeli military officer put the number at more than 100. Iran state media confirmed that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, had launched extensive drone strikes against targets in occupied territories, referring to Israel. Missiles were also launched, according to Israeli and Iranian media. Public shelters were opened in northern Israeli city of Haifa and Israel's transportation ministry said it would close its airspace. Nearby Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq also announced the temporary closure of their airspace. U.S. President Joe Biden met with his national security team to assess the attack, according to a U.S. official. The U.S. National Security Council spokesperson Adrian Watson said Saturday that Biden is in constant communication with Israeli officials as well as other partners and allies, and reaffirmed his position that the administration's support for Israel's security is ironclad.
Iran warns U.S. to stay out of fight with Israel or face attack on troops. Iran sent a message to the Biden administration through several Arab countries earlier this week, if the U.S. gets involved in the fighting between Israel and Iran, U.S. forces in the region will be attacked, three U.S. officials told Axios. Why it matters, the U.S. and Israel are preparing for Iran to retaliate against Israel for an airstrike that killed a top Iranian general in Damascus last week. Why it matters, the U.S. and Israel are preparing for Iran to retaliate against Israel for an airstrike that killed a top Iranian general in Damascus last week. The Iranian supreme leader has threatened punishment for Israel but through private channels Iran has signaled it would be limited. Israel and the U.S. think an Iranian attack would include the launch of ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and attack drones from Iran to Israeli territory. U.S. officials say the Biden administration asked Israel to notify the U.S. and for the U.S. to have a say before decisions are made about any retaliation by Israel. The latest, a U.S. defense official told Axios the U.S. is moving additional assets to the region to bolster regional deterrence efforts and increase force protection for U.S. forces. Behind the scenes, three U.S. officials said that in recent days the Iranians told several Arab Governments they see the U.S. as responsible for the Israeli attack that killed the Iranian. General in Damascus, regardless of U.S. efforts to distance itself from the strike. The U.S. maintains it had no involvement in the strike, a senior U.S. official said. The Iranian message was that if the U.S. gets involved after an Iranian attack on Israel, U.S. bases in the region will be attacked. The Iranian message was we will attack the forces that attack us, so don't fuck with us and we won't fuck with you," one U.S. official said. Between the lines, President Biden and other U.S. officials have said publicly the U.S. would help Israel defend itself against Iranian attacks. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told Israeli Minister of Defense Yov Gallant in a call on Thursday that Israel could count on full U.S. support to defend Israel against Iranian attacks, which Tehran has publicly threatened the Pentagon said. Gallant told Austin, a direct Iranian attack will require an appropriate Israeli response against Iran. A U.S. official told Axios it wasn't clear from the message received via several Arab countries whether the Iranians were threatening to attack U.S. forces if they help Israel intercept Iranian missiles or only if they participate in an Israeli retaliation. The general assessment of the U.S. intelligence community is the Iranians could attack U.S. forces only if the U.S joins Israel in a counteroffensive, according to the U.S. official. Yes, but, Iran is sending a different message through other communication channels, including calls between the foreign ministers of the U.K., Australia, and Germany and their Iranian counterpart on Thursday. Two U.S. officials said the Iranian message in these calls was more nuanced and signaled the Iranians are aimed at a limited response that will not lead to a regional escalation. Another U.S. official said the U.S. is communicating directly with Iran through the formal Swiss channel of communication and Iran did not communicate threats through this channel. U.S. officials have been in touch with regional partners to discuss efforts to message to Iran to not escalate the situation, a U.S. official said. They've also been in touch with Israel to ensure they are able to defend themselves and at the same time prevent tensions from escalating, the official added. What to watch? U.S. CENTCOM Commander General Michael Eric Carilla is in Israel to coordinate the U.S.-Israeli defensive effort ahead of any possible Iranian strike, U.S. and Israeli officials said. The officials stressed the Biden administration asked Israel in recent days to notify and consult the U.S. in advance of any Israeli retaliation against Iran. The Biden administration felt Israel didn't consult and didn't give it an appropriate notice before its strike in Damascus that killed the Iranian general, even though such a strike could have had implications for U.S. forces in the region. The Washington Post reported Austin complained to Gallant in a call on April 3 about the lack of sufficient notice from the Israeli side. Israeli assurances fail to move key Democrat on F-15 deal. A key House Democrat reviewed Israel's assurances on following international law in Gaza but still came away without giving his approval for Israel's purchase of F-15 fighter jets, Axios has learned. Why it matters, Foreign Affairs Committee ranking member Gregory Meeks, Democrat New York, faces pressure from, at least a dozen, Democrats on his committee to exercise his power to effectively block the deal, according to a lawmaker familiar with the matter. House Democrats have grown increasingly critical of the Israeli war effort in recent weeks and months, particularly after the deaths of seven World Central Kitchen staffers in an Israeli strike. If approved, 
the F-15s would be delivered five years from now. Driving the news, Meeks has said he's looking for assurances from Israel that it'll use U.S. weapons in accordance with international law and allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. Meeks' approval is required under the Arms Export Control Act, which allows the leaders of the House Foreign Affairs and Senate Foreign Relations Committees to effectively place holds on U.S. weapons sales What we're hearing, a senior U.S. official told Axios that, on Tuesday, the State Department showed Meeks a letter of assurances that was delivered by the Israeli Minister of Defense several weeks ago. After he viewed the letter of assurances, Meeks didn't tell the State Department whether he would sign off and didn't articulate any terms, the U.S. official said. The State Department didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. What he's saying, Meeks told Axios that, the State Department has been very accessible to me, so I'm looking at a number of things. That may have been one of them. I can't talk about none of those things because it's in a SCIF, it's a secret. So, I really can't talk about it, Meek said when pressed about the letter. There are a lot of things that have to be considered, he said on Thursday. The F-15s are not going to be delivered, if in fact, they are, until, five years from now. I've got a lot of things that I'm looking at, doing my homework, on, the ground, etc. Zoom in. Asked if he has signed off on the deal, Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chair Ben Carden, Democrat Maryland, told Axios, it's not a matter of signing off or not signing off. It hasn't gotten to that point yet. It's a five-year delivery schedule, so there's no urgency, he said. Asked if the F-15 deal is a leverage point to force Israel to adhere to stricter human rights standards, Carden said, I personally don't think it is because it's a delivery date five years from now. Reality check. Representative Brad Sherman, Democrat California, the second most senior Democrat on foreign affairs after Meeks and a staunch Israel supporter, said he can't imagine Meeks would ultimately block the sale. Israel faces more security threats than just Hamas. Hamas doesn't have an air force, but Iran sure does, and Iran is making noises today as if they'd like to send their air force against Israel, he said. Big thanks to our viewers and subscribers. Your dedication is the heartbeat of our channel. Let's keep spreading positivity and joy to the world, one video at a time.